FIRE stands for financial independence, retire early, but I like to say relax early again, because that word retire has that negative connotation of like, my life is over. I'm sitting, you know, now I'm sitting on the couch or watching Netflix or I have nothing to contribute to society, which is the complete opposite, right? So it's really about relax early and also giving you way more options. Like you now, the world is your oyster. You can decide whether you want to work. Some people love what they do, but choosing what you do versus having to go to work are two different things, right? Like Mm -hmm. choosing to go to work versus having to go to work. So, um, and some people love what they do, but they don't want to work 40 hours a week. They only want to work 20 hours a week. Cool. You have that option, right? So financial independence is all about having options and choices and using this 4% rule that is a guideline, right? Like we said, some years you might take out 3%, some years you might take out 5%. It all, you have to be flexible and you have to, you know, be prepared but it's basically like a movement, a group of people who have this type of mentality of like, I don't want to wait till I'm 65 years old to stop working and then en- and then enjoy my life, mm-hmm. right? I want to know what that's like much sooner. I want to travel or I want to explore different options or I want to have a career change, whatever, right? And I don't want to wait until I'm 65 to do that, especially when we think about the, you know, the life expectancy in America is about 80 years old. So that's it. You work your whole life and then you've got 15 years. And if you're lucky, you're in good health and you actually Mm -hmm. get to enjoy those 15 years. Right. But many people aren't. Um, So you're, you know, you might be homebound. You might be dealing with a disability. Who knows? But this is something where um, I think like millennials and Gen Zers are starting to connect with this idea of like, I don't want to work my entire life. So how can I hack my way to a shorter, you know, work life so that I can enjoy more of my life on my terms. Yeah. I love this concept. I felt like I've always, I didn't know this term, but even in my early twenties, I was like, I don't want to work like so hard, like 40 hours a week. I don't want that corporate lifestyle. I need, like, I want to be able to travel more. So, (laughs) so with this concept, I mean, how do people get started? Is it about saving money and starting to invest in the stock market? Right. So Um, that's one way. And I want to be super clear that I don't want to tell people like, Hey, you can only become financially independent. If you invest in the stock market, there are many paths to financial independence. You can do it by starting a business. You can do it by, um, investing in real estate, right? There's Mm -hmm. lots of ways you can become financially independent, but I share the way I'm doing it because, um, that's what I'm familiar with. So I'm sharing my knowledge and my experience and the way that I'm doing it is through the stock market, which I believe is really, people love to say passive income for everything. But to me, the stock market is the only true passive income. Like you put money in the stock market, you literally don't have to do anything else. Like you just go buy something and that's it. You're done, Mm -hmm. right? Whereas other types of income, a business, real estate, it takes work. You got to put in work. Yeah, exactly. So just being transparent about that. So with the um, stock market, a lot of people are like, okay, that sounds great. What, where do I start? So the best place to start is probably somewhere you've already started, which is like your workplace 401k. You, a lot of people don't even realize that that's invested in the stock market, right? I get that question all the time. People are like, oh, does my 401k count? I'm like, yes, it does, right? And the fact that you didn't know that tells me so much. It tells me that like the stuff is not being explained to us. So you may already be investing in the stock market. You don't even realize it. The other, you know, um, ways by opening a Roth IRA and people are like, what's that? It's just an account that holds your money. And then you go and buy investments inside of that account, right? So you go to like an online broker, like a Fidelity or a Vanguard, you open a Roth IRA, you deposit money from your checking account, and now it's time to actually buy the investment, right? Because the Roth IRA is not the investment. This account is just literally like a savings account that holds your money. So now it's time to buy the investment. So you're like, okay, well, what do I buy? Do I buy Tesla? Do I buy Amazon? Do I buy Apple? And I'm like, how about you buy everything? How about you buy all of it? And then you don't have to choose, right? Again, what are we doing? We're trying to get the average of what everything the stock market's doing. We want to get that 10%. How do you get that 10%? By buying everything. You buy the good ones and the bad ones, but it averages out in the end to 10%. So you're going to get some duds and you're going to get some awesome companies, but it's all going to average out. And you do that by buying something called an index fund or an ETF, 
And that's going to have hundreds, if not thousands of companies in there. And boom, just like that, you own the entire stock market and you just keep money, putting money in every month. Every time you get paid, you put some money in, you keep putting money in and then you start growing your nest egg.